Hello dear friends what do you want to learn Yes this is the first point that I am going to start my presentation with You want to learn English grammar and whenever you go to learn English grammar the term that you have to face every time is tense So what is tense how to tell it that would be our topic today but remember today we aren't going to take a class on english grammar and tense rather it would be a discussion from which you would find out what is the proper approach to take towards our learning of english grammar so let's begin our class regarding proper approach to learn english grammar So most of the time what we do most of the time when you produce a sentence we put its time into it so when you produce a sentence you don't produce it with some words and a verb rather there in this sentence you put its time and you make the verb effective and that use of time in a sentence by means of verb is called what this is called tense yes dear friends so when we produce a verb in a sentence what we do we actually use a verb and we fuse it with the tense and we produce a sense so the time of the action gets imbibed into verb as the form of tense so that's it so whenever you produce a sentence you must remember that there is an action or a state so whether it's an action or a state whatever it may be it must be presented through the tense and the verb so when we conjugate verb and time we get the tense that's it that's how we have to make the use of tense in a sentence so that's it so what we finally get finally we get verb plus time is equal to tense but what would be your approach how you could learn this that's the most important factor that's the key factor here what would be your approach let's take four different sentences with same verb and same subject the sun sets the sun is setting the sun was setting the sun has already set so here four different sentences i have taken and now if we look at these sentences what we get we get that the same subject the sun is used here with the same verb set but for each and every sentence the verb is different why because it is actually imbibed with the time segment in it if i say the sun sets it means i am talking of a common factor it happens it's a truth it's an universal truth so when we say the sun sets uh, most of the time if you produce this sentence a man who knows english who can understand english he would come to a conclusion that uh, yes it means the sun usually sets now if you say the sun is setting so a person who knows english he would consider oh he is asking me to look at the setting sun the sun is setting if you say the sun was setting he would ask you when what happened then because he would consider it as something that has already been passed and if you say the sun has set he would ask what happened then because he would consider that sun has already set and now some other thing would relate to it would get related to it yes dear friends that's how tense contains sense in it that's how 
with the tense we get the sense of the verb that's why in shiksha mantra every time we say what yes tense is the sense of the sentence just remember it put it into your mind tense is the sense of the sentence without tense you don't get the sense of the sentence properly if you have to produce a sentence with proper sense with proper expressions you must use what tense successfully with the packet of your verb what's the packet of your verb yes dear friends your verb is actually just like a packet suppose uh, you want to uh, send uh, something to uh, your friends place so what you do you pack it into a box you would wrap it in it into gift wrap you would put it a card and then you would post it so this is how we pack things for delivery so when you are delivering a sentence you have to pack the time in it without the proper sense of the time your sentence would play no role it don't get that sense when this sentence would be listened to or would be read the reader or the listener would get what you mean and without the time sense it's not possible so it's a very simple to get it you have to use tense properly because tense is the sense of the sentence yes dear friends so that's it now we are talking about time so time how many types of times are there now you tell me yeah types of time how could it be possible time is abstract and you are asking us to tell how many types of times are there yeah we know how many types of tenses are there now what you will say you will say there are three different types of tenses present past and future and there are different types of okay i'm going to that point later but you would say tenses are of three basic types present past future and sometimes uh, i have even found in some books it's written as past present future and most of the time our students tell us yes dear sir it's past present and future but what would be the proper order proper sequence whether it would be past present or future or present past future we are coming to that point but before this one you must remember present past future these three are not the tense they are the time you are talking of present time you are talking of past time you are talking of future time you can't say that these are tense rather you have to say these are time yes dear friends that's the idea behind it that's why most of the time i have found it when you are asked with a sentence suppose if i say uh, this place is very hot now i ask you what's the tense in it you would say sir is very hot is oh that means it's in present no dear friend it's not in present tense it's in present time tense is different time and tense they aren't the same don't make this mistake if you go on saying it's in present tense it's in past tense it's in future tense it means you haven't learned tense properly it simply means your learning of tense would be of no use with this if you want to make your learning of tense in english grammar obviously you have to know that present past future they aren't the tense i can challenge you it's not that they are the tenses rather they are the time so for tense you get some aspects that's why in modern english grammar we have aspects for tense yes they are indefinite aspect progressive aspect and perfect aspect so when time gets conjugated with aspects we get tense so time plus aspect when they are conjugated we get tense time plus aspect is equal to tense how present time indefinite aspect so present indefinite or simple present present time 
प्रोग्रेस आस्पेक्ट सो प्रेजेंट प्रोग्रेसिव और प्रेजेंट कंटिन्यूस टेंस प्रेजेंट टाइम परफेक्ट आस्पेक्ट दैट मींस प्रेजेंट परफेक्ट टेंस प्रेजेंट टाइम एंड एन आस्पेक्ट दैट गेट्स सम परफेक्ट एंड सम प्रोग्रेसिव और कंटिन्यूस इन इट सो प्रेजेंट परफेक्ट कंटिन्यूस एंड दे आर द टेंस सिंपल प्रेजेंट प्रेजेंट कंटिन्यूस और प्रोग्रेसिव प्रेजेंट परफेक्ट present perfect continuous these four are the tense and for each and every type you'd get four uh, sets of tenses so finally you get 12 types of tenses remember dear friends remember dear students remember dear listeners this is very important tenses are not three types they are 12 types so let me introduce them once again let me repeat them present simple present present continuous present perfect present perfect continuous past simple past past continuous past perfect past perfect continuous future simple future future continuous future perfect future perfect continuous so the idea is when we add time with aspect we get tense that's it you have to remember it you have to learn tense by this way all the other types of learning all the other types of approaches might confuse you you might get confused how is tense formed it's like chemistry it's just like chemistry there's hydrogen there's oxygen and when you fuse them with some chemical process you get h2o that's neither hydrogen nor oxygen rather that is water so you get time you get aspect when you fuse them properly you'd get tense it's neither time nor aspect rather it's a fusion of time and aspect it's a fusion of time and the verb and the sense together and is considered as the tense yes that's it now our point that we have left what to begin with present or past what would be our proper sequence should it begin with present or past okay dear friends so for this i have to use a scale that would help me so just wait and observe so you know this what's that that's a scale that's a measuring scale and now we'd consider this as a time 1 2 3 4 5 and in this way you would get till yes till 30 so you'd consider it as time suppose uh, we are here on 15 yes so i would uh, provide my position with this gems clip yeah so we are here on 15 so what's happening now this is present this is the time we are in so everything that's beyond it would be past because we have crossed 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and we have reached 15 so these positions these time frames you have to consider one as a time frame two as a time frame three as a time frame so these time frames are actually past so you'd consider them as past time but 15 we are on this time so this is present time but 16 17 18 19 20 till 30 or uh, more to come these would be future why because we have a doubt we don't know if we would reach 16 or not we might reach but we aren't sure so this is future now tell me if this portion which we already have uh, covered is past are they always past or they have been made past what's the concept behind this once upon a time there was the gems clip put into there put into one there can you say it probably you can it's in one and then one was present then when we have shifted it to 2 now what happened 2 is present and 1 is past now 
we have shifted it to 3. Now what happened when it comes to 3? Just consider 1 and 2, they are considered as past and 3 is considered as present. So that's how with the passing of time, a present becomes past and a future becomes present. So every time we have to consider a time, we have to consider our present position first. So each and every time becomes present first, then past. That's why you have to begin the time frame with present. Yes, dear friends, that's why it's shade we must live in present. Present is the most precious moment. Present is the most preferred moment and present is the most prayed moment we have to pray for the present not for the future i don't know whether you'd be there to reach 16 or 17 you don't know 15 can be our end so why to wait and pray for future rather pray for present make my present beautiful make your present beautiful because once your present is made beautiful that would make your past beautiful and only two considerations that are real to us that's the past and the present only the past and the present these two are real and we'll see in the future we don't know we actually expect that something might happen here in this time frame but we aren't sure whether it would happen or not it might not happen or might happen differently than what we have expected. So dear friend, this is your life a measuring scale onto which you measure your past and present and you expect your future and that makes your life. And that makes your tense as well. That makes your learning as well. Yes, dear friends, learning is just another name of life. So keep it with you, measure your life and pray for your present prefer your present live in your present learn properly present and you would learn past you would learn future very easily so that would be our approach towards learning of english grammar particularly the chapter tense each and every moment you have to consider this we got into present moment suppose 15 that is our present time. So how would shift from time to tense? You have to zoom in. Just you have to zoom in. We have accepted a small fragment that is 15. I don't know whether you could see it or not. Uh, yeah. Now, if you look at this well, what you would get? That within this gems clip, 15, you would get some other time fragments as well. Yes, dear friends, now you'd ask me, sir, how long is considered as present? How long it's considered as past? How long it's considered as future? You may ask me, what we would consider? One minute as present, one second as a present, one moment as a present, or one hour as a present, or one day as a present. What would be the definition of present? Which time frame will we measure with this measuring scale? And we'd find out that, yes, this is our present. How to do this? How to measure time? Yes, dear friends, there we'd discuss. Actually, just remember, you won't have any such perfect fragmentation that I would consider one minute as a present or one hour or one year or 10 years as present it doesn't matter it totally depends on you the speaker one who is producing the sentence it totally depends on him you may consider one minute as present you may consider one hour as present it depends on the event what you are actually narrating okay now, uh, for an example, we may have uh, the example of a cricket match. It continues so long. Now, you may consider the whole day, one day cricket match. A whole day 
as present because the cricket match is played in that time frame. Now you may consider each and every ball as a present because after each and every ball the moment gets passed. So it's according to you, you may consider each and every over as a present because as the over is uh, gone, another over comes, that over becomes present, sorry, past. So just like the uh, actually marks of this scale, each and every moment that you consider becomes present and past. So it's up to you how you'd consider it whether you would consider them in inches or in centimeter how will you consider them you may consider them in centimeter or you may consider them in inches that means you may consider them in small frames or in large frames or larger or largest it's according to your need it's according to the need of your expression so don't limit yourselves language is not so much limited language is limitless it has limitless probability in it it has huge possibility so you can use your language in your own way you can form your tenses in your own way you can form your time frame in your own way and it's according to your thought it would happen there's nothing like this this time frame would be present, that would be past. There's nothing universal. So what happens? Suppose uh, you have a rich collection of antique pieces. It would be better if we uh, make an example here. I have a very rich collection of antique pieces and now I want to show you the antique pieces I have. So I may put the camera into an angle so that you can have a good look of the whole things together. Now you would look at them, you can't focus on each and every object. You might focus on some objects, but you can't have a focus on each and everything. So your observation of my collection of antique pieces would be incomplete. So now what I do, I would put the camera one after another. So I would show you one piece at a time. Now you can focus on each and everything. But there might be some problem because when I put a, uh, an object into our frame, might be there would be some other objects in the background and you'd get distracted. So what I do now, I would use a light. The room would be just dark and I would use a spotlight for each and every item so it's my collection it's up to me how would i present it it's up to me how i'd show them to you the same thing happens for your sentences it's your sentence you are going to produce it so it's up to you how you would present this it's up to you how to make the fragments and produce the tenses how and what extent actually you take you'd consider for the readers or the listeners to be considered as present so your consideration would be your time frame and the listener or the reader would accept it as your concept and when they would produce that would be theirs so it varies. It varies from different situations. It varies from different speakers to speaker. So don't make everything fixed. Rather, make everything arranged. Not scattered. Rather, arranged. Don't limit yourself. I know you are not limitless. But you are not so much limited as you consider yourself. You are a bit limitless because you are not limitless but you are agile enough to shed your limit and learning is all about set your limit yes dear friends in my next blog i'll discuss about how learning is all about set your limit it's not limitless 
but it's all about set your limit and try to reach different limits one after another. And this is what would be your proper approach for tense. I don't know how uh, actually you have liked it or not. If you liked it, obviously you have the thumb to be pressed. Yes, but once only, not more than once. And you have whole scope to subscribe this channel with the bell notifications yes and also to share it with your friends and families so that they can also get notified about the videos that has been brought here in shiksha mantra so we are returning very soon with a fresh video until then bye bye